Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. Lisa and I like collecting flat pennies. It's a great, inexpensive souvenir, as long as you don't get compelled to collect every single one. And we actually have a pretty big collection. We've filled up an entire book. And then some. And while a DIY flat penny book would make for a great video, the topic of this video takes place before the penny has even been flattened. On several occasions, Lisa and I have stumbled across a flat penny machine just out in the wild, only to discover that we didn't have any change on us. So I started keeping a penny and two quarters in my wallet. Unfortunately, that really didn't work that great because the coins would eventually just fall out. So I came up with this. A 3D printed coin holder with enough room to hold four quarters and two pennies, enough to make two flat pennies, which can then be stored in the card and safely transported home. Now, while it does work just fine, there are some improvements I would like to make. For instance, it's a little hard to get the coins out, and it's also a little difficult to get the card out of the wallet in the first place. All right, so this is my original uh, Fusion model for the card. So I'm just going to go in here and just make a few modifications. So I think I can go back to my original sketch and I'm going to add some circles, fairly big, so that I can just push my finger into those and more easily punch out the coins. Now I'm not an authority at all on Fusion 360, so I am, uh, I'm definitely not the one to show you really how to use it. But uh, the more I force myself to use it, the, the, the more I'm learning and the more comfortable I'm getting with it. And it becomes really fun when you start getting in the flow of things and really understanding how it all works. And I want to mirror it. 22. No. And I could draw it four times. We'll just do this, mirror. Okay. And then select, select, mirror line click all right so then i need to do well whatever might as well we'll do a smaller hole here okay cool so finish sketch and now i can select all of these do an extrude down there cool now i have holes that i can more easily punch out all of those uh, coins once they're in there. On um, the tolerance is a, is pretty good. They're really tight, but I want them to stay in there. And now that I have a way to get them out, that should be good. So there's really only one other modification I want to make. And so we'll go back into the sketch one more time. I want to put a hole in it here as like a little fingernail grab to make it easier to pull out of my wallet. So finish sketch, extrude. One side, two sides, cut through that, enter. Perfect. And then we'll just point three. And to navigate, I'm using uh, my 3D mouse. I've shown it in a video before. This is by a company called 3D Connection, and it's basically like a giant thumbstick on a heavy base. But it's it's super helpful for uh, for working in Fusion 360, the uh, 3D Connections Explorer mouse. It works great, it makes it so much easier to, to actually get it in the position you want versus trying to use the mouse. Perfect, so that's all the real modifications I wanted to make. Export as STL, okay. Now I'm going to see if I can print it on my TiVo. So I'm attempting to uh, upgrade my TiVo Tornado 3D printer. Amazingly, I was getting some of the best quality prints off of any printer I've ever used, which isn't many, but it was it was an amazing print quality. And then I had a catastrophic clog. Um, it just clogged up, stopped printing, and completely engulfed the entire print head. That is one 
crazy looking print head. It's all put together though. That's pretty cool. So now I gotta uh, do the wiring. We'll see if it feels like printing. I still, it's, it's printing, but I still think there's something wrong with it. I'm gonna slice that in Cura, which is a uh, free slicer. And then uh, save to removable, saving to uh, TiVo, eject. Okay, now I can uh, throw this in the uh, TiVo and see if and how it prints. All right, well, it just finished printing uh, MakerCoin as a test. The print completed, but it looks like I'm getting some shifting. Oh, it's already happened. Hey, no layer shifting on this one. That's awesome. This thing might actually be fixed. I've been tinkering with it for months. I switched to a uh, higher class SD card and that might have actually been what was causing that layer shift issue. But either way, I think I can print my uh, coin card on here. So I'm going to give that a try. That looks like a successful print. First layer had a few issues, but it stuck down. That's pretty good. Let's uh, see how everything fits. It works great. The coins fit perfectly. Nice and snug fit on the quarters. The holes I added make it super easy to pop out the coins. It fits into the wallet just as the previous one. But unlike the first design, the finger notch makes it super easy to pull back out of the wallet. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, you should get one. They've never been more accessible, both in price and ease of use. Well, some of them anyway. But of course, there are certainly ways we could make this without a 3D printer. We could try making one out of some styrene, which is a material that I love working with, but why don't we use something that's already the exact size we need? Whenever I get something like this in the mail, with one of these fake credit cards in it, I save it because with one of these guys, I have basically an unlimited supply of free guitar picks. And since these are already credit card sized, this is a great place to start. Now, of course, trying to cut a perfectly circular hole in a credit card with scissors or even an X-Acto knife would be quite difficult. Thankfully, I happen to have two punches that are the exact size of a quarter and a penny. However, these are made for paper, so they don't have nearly the amount of force that this pick punch does. So it probably won't be able to go through something as thick as a plastic credit card. However, a lot of these are actually quite thin because they're trying to save on money, and some aren't even plastic at all. They're just thick cardboard. So let's find one of the really thin plastic ones first and see if the punch can go through it. This is quite thin, but still plastic. Now, I still don't think I'm going to be able to punch through this just with the feeble strength of my thumb. So we'll bring in some reinforcements. Look at that, perfect. Let's see if we can find another thin one. I was actually able to punch through two cards at the same time. Um, I was wondering how I was going to be able to punch a hole in one and then in the exact same spot on the other. Um, I'm sure I could have done it if I kind of measured it and put down some marks and stuff, but I figured I'd just try the brute force method and uh, it worked. Just a little bit of spray adhesive. Glue this one to the base card. We'll glue this one to the middle layer. Let's see if the coins fit. There we go. So certainly doable without a 3D printer. That is actually really cool looking. 
Now, of course, there's no reason you can't spend more time carefully punching out these holes to try and get the arrangement for four quarters and two pennies, and even cut out that oblong circle to hold the flattened penny once you've made it, but I think this is really cool. It definitely shows that you can make just about anything you want using just the supplies and tools you have available to you. But my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nikki Clements, if you're wondering. Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for dough. Anyway, I'm off to make something else.